The more you try to qualify, the more nothing will ever manifest in your life. So that Hi, my YouTube family. Welcome on set today. Today we have a continuous topic and I will call it as I had called the previous lessons for life. But this is lessons for life part three. We've had part one and two in the previous sessions. So After that heartfelt discussion, I call it discussion with God, telling him what he really means to you showing him, demonstrating to him that you can't move without him. Then the next thing now is you rise against those forces of darkness and you don't mix them up. I normally say when you're faced by a challenge, even if it takes a whole week, a whole month, a whole year, you're only concentrating and focusing on that particular matter, deal with it until it is completely over. Until you can feel from within you, your spirit, that the air has cleared. Don't mix issues. Don't take 10 things. No wonder things don't, get, don't happen. If I'm dealing with a matter, I will take one at a time. And until I see it physically and I feel from deep within me, it's over. It is over. That's when I move to the next. So this is something else that you need to pick. So we said we are starting with bloodline. So we are bloodline demons. And for me, I like being guided by the scripture. So I, I will not tell you exactly how I do because that can take a whole week's training and teaching. But I can only tell you the key things that you need to apply in this kind of prayer. We are dealing with bloodline demons. We are dealing with name demons that flow through your name. They are ancient demons that have pre-existed in your lineage. So they know everything about your lineage. Not only you, they know you more than you know yourself. So that is one thing you also need to understand when you're dealing with these forces. And I will call them not doors, but gates. These are major gates that you'll be closing once you finalize with this particular prayer point. So the bloodline demons and the name demons. So when you start engaging, I will take you back to the scripture. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, demonic wickedness in high places. I rise against those entities, those bloodline, demonic principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, demonic wickedness in high places. I will even include demonic kings and queens and princes. Those demonic angels. Those demonic armies, you know, whatever comes in your mind, they are demonic, they are giants. Yes, those demonic gatekeepers, those demonic strongholds, you rise against them, you paralyze them. The first thing you do when you mention demons, paralyze, I paralyze, I bind you, I destroy you. I have to disarm you first. I disarm you. I paralyze you. I bind you. I destroy you. I pull you down. Now I can pull them down because they are bound. I pull you down from your high places. I uproot you from your seed, root, source, and foundation. And I cast you into the lake of fire. I don't throw demons anywhere. I don't tell them cast out, go. They'll go and start reorganizing to come back. It has been in the scripture. You clean your house, you chase one demon, then they come and find the house clean. He goes and calls all the other tons of demons to come and inhibit the same place where you cleaned. So for me, I do not send them to hell. I do not tell them to go somewhere. I send them to the final where it was created for them. For the demon from even for hell where it will end. The final end of even hell itself into the lake of fire that is where i put an end to them you cannot have tormented me all these years and then i chase you outside i will throw you into a place where you will never live again your end has come permanent end spiritually and physically so i cast you into the lake of fire in eternal damnation and torment for all eternity and no created being or thing can restore you challenge me or contend with me forever and ever. Amen. And I will say for all eternity in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Remember, I have taught you how to pray the right way. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. What does the Bible say? It shall be done. 
So, Heavenly Father, in the mighty and everlasting name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I rise against these demonic entities. We are dealing with bloodline, demonic entities. We are dealing with name, demonic entities. I paralyze them. I bind them. I destroy them. And I uproot them from their seed, root source, and foundation. I pull them down from their high places. And I cast them into the lake of fire. For me, I cast them into the lake of fire. Let them, whatever they are created, however they are created, let them continue doing so. And me, I continue finishing them off. But I will not cast out a demon to go and torment somebody else tomorrow. I don't do that. So that is the knowledge for me, for myself, I acquired for myself. When I'm dealing with forces of darkness that have caused havoc in my life for the longest time. This is the revelation I got. And from the moment I started dealing with those kind of forces, I realized that household wickedness has started losing its hold. And remember why it is profound. And once I have taught in my previous channels, I have topics, I have taught about household wickedness. You need to go and watch that. There is a profound reason why God did not warn you against your neighbor, against your friend, but he told you about your household wickedness. Let me tell you one of the most profound reasons why God did that. Because he knew it was a gateway. That any enemy that would want to attack you from outside, they have no, any entity from outside has no legal rights or grounds to access your premises. But now, because this is a demonic entity and it has vowed to attack you, it will only access the one gateway of your household enemies. Because remember, they belong to the same kingdom. Remember, this is one kingdom. And you also know that the demonic kingdom cooperate so well. They are in cooperation. They work together very well. So these entities will locate your household enemy's gates to access you to be able to destroy you. So now you understand why it is very prudent and key to rise against household wickedness. And I've told you the two gateways of household wickedness, they can only thrive through the blood and the name. Yeah. Now, after you have clearly put to an utter end those demonic forces and entities and I have briefed you a bit on how to go about it guided by the scriptures and the revelation of the knowledge of the word of God that God has bestowed upon us you have destroyed those demonic entities but remember after the prayer you realize that the physical effect whatever had manifested in your life is still there so every time you deal with a particular force, demonic entity that has been destroying your life, don't forget when you are destroying that particular entity, you are destroying it with its spiritual and physical manifestation. So when you're destroying those demonic entities and casting them into the lake of fire, you are destroying their weapons, their aid, their help, and their spiritual and physical manifestation. Their spiritual and physical manifestation, you nullify them. You vanquish them. You put them to an utter end. They no longer exist spiritually and physically. Just as you have destroyed those forces of darkness, so have you put to an utter end, vanquished, eradicated, put to an utter end every spiritual and physical manifestation that came as a result of those forces. So you put them to another end. So from that day henceforth, you realize that whatever these entities had brought into your life also cease to exist in your life. Then after that, rise against vengeance and evil retaliation spirits. Those forces that come to fight back because they are angered. Remember this kingdom, you have destroyed a whole lot of what the devil had planned for you. So they're not going to smile. So you need to destroy those aftermaths that they normally send. Vengeance and evil retaliation spirits. You destroy them the same way. Cast them into the lake of fire. And before that, for those who do not know how to destroy monitoring spirits, many people have heard about monitoring spirits. But remember... The angelic being behind the monitors, those small demons, are the watcher spirits. So you need to also deal with the watchers. 
And a watcher evil spirit is an angelic being. So that is a very hierarchy demonic entity. You will also deal with it the same way. Because the minute you destroy a watcher spirit, you at the same time you are destroying those other small demons in the name of monitor, surveillance, and whatever gadgets they are using to monitor and keep watch of you. And you realize when you are doing this, for those people who have suffered the monitoring, spirits you realize the day you get that revelation or after watching this video and you decide to attack a watcher demonic entity the first thing you feel is fear and a lot of it if you are closing your eyes you'll feel like somebody is already in, in your room and it is a very fearful atmosphere then you realize that you are actually being watched every recording you are being recorded 24-7, like there was a CCTV in your house watching you 24-7. So once you have destroyed those entities about the watcher spirits, yes, destroy every record that had been taken into the demonic world. Let them now live in the dark forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. That is why you will find yourself, you, you can even find yourself in some quote-unquote churches because they call themselves churches, but those are not really genuine churches where they use divination. And you realize that that particular minister, despite how accurate he is telling others about their life, when he comes to you, he sees black. He doesn't see anything. He will not tell you anything about yourself. And sometimes they wind up accusing you because they're not operating with the spirit of the God that you're hiding yourself. You're not hiding yourself. You destroyed the angelic being they use. And that angelic demonic being is not of the kingdom of our God, is of the kingdom of the devil. But if that prophet is operating from the most high, then he will be able to detect what the matter in your life is. And that is how now somebody who is spiritually mature can be able to tell, discerning the spirit. The Bible tells you to have a discernment spirit. That is how now you discern spirits. Yeah. Now from there, you have permanently put to another end of evil spiritually and physically. You have locked the biggest gate into your life. Actually, the two major gates that the enemy has used to access your life. So from there, the next step is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving comes as a result of realizing that everything I have put before God, everything I have prayed, everything I have told my Abba Father, it is done. Because that is what the scripture tells me. So beyond any reasonable doubt, everything that I have done spiritually and physically has come to pass. So Father God, I thank you. Because from this day forward, no more evil, no more demonic entities through my bloodline. No more demonic entities through my name in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You see? So after that, rest easy. That is the time now you sleep like a baby. Because you are sleeping in faith. And by knowing that this particular issue has come to another end. I hope I have assisted. I hope I've answered many questions. I hope you can put it to, to test. And you can give your feedbacks after that. But remember, in prayer, in meditation, whenever you're having a conversation of God, now faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is, I am teaching you what I have faith in because I believe in the word of God, because the word of God is the only truth. Now faith is substance because he taught me, he showed me this. I believe and so now faith is substance. Now faith is substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Everything I open my mouth to tell you is full of faith because I believe. Because my Abba Father told me and what he has told me it is so. And that is why I have lived to see it come to pass. Now faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me tell you something else. Where faith is, there is no fear. You can never, never, never experience fear. Where faith is, that is where you hear somebody telling you, you are so bold. 
you are so fearless. I am bold and fearless because now faith is. I inhale from faith. I live in faith. I dwell in faith. I believe that I no longer walk alone. There is one who proceeds before me. And that one cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. He does not protect me, defend me, provide for me because I am so good. No, because I am the daughter, because I am the child, because he loved me just as I am. And he will continue watching over me regardless. That is my faith. Now faith is substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Not because I'm pretty. Not because I'm good. Not because I'm righteous. Not because I'm not a sinner. I'm actually a sinner. You see? Not because I'm righteous. I am not righteous. But he has made me righteous. His righteousness. I live in his righteousness. I live in his purity. I live in his love. I live in his protection. Without him, I am nothing. Now faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is why I have faith that I can bring down Lucifer himself. I can bring down every giant. I can bring down every Goliath. Because why? Not because of me, but the one who goes forth before me. Them that be with me are more than them that be with them. Do I believe that? Yes. Now faith is substance. It has become substance. The evidence, title, deed of things I cannot see. What I'm praying about I can't see. But it is a title deed. It is evidence of those things I'm not seeing. So faith, that's why you're told faith moves mountain. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you will tell that mountain, move and get into that ocean. And nothing by any means shall be difficult unto you. Nothing will be impossible unto you. Nothing. Remember, nothing. Not some things. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. You have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. How small is a mustard seed? And you're being told that that mustard seed faith will move a mountain. So begin to exercise your faith from the word that God has already told you. I have given you enough scriptures for you to believe. I have told you so many things for you to believe that everything is possible to them that believe. Another thing I wanted to enlighten you on, something I learned along my journey, my walk of life, self-righteousness. Self-righteousness availeth nothing. I actually learned the more I was deeply engraved in religion, because most of the time you don't even realize it's religion. You are in church, 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 and you're taught, and you know your mind is so programmed how to stay away from sin. What you do not realize that the more you actually keep thinking about sin, that is when actually you are prone to sinning. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. What is engraved in your heart? I have lived into a religious mindset of sin, 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 sin. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. So out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speak. My actions will be what has always been deep within. So I fight my members as Paul used to say. But by the end of the day, you find yourself sinning because this is the gospel. The, it's not even gospel because gospel is good news. This is the doctrine of condemnation that I had to live under. So the more I tried to proclaim myself righteous, the more things became difficult. Because by the end of the day, you will find yourself even when you are having that discussion with God or when you are praying, you are praying from the basis of Lord C how much of a saint I am. See, I do not do this and that. See how much I have struggled and I have kept away from sin. So now I want my efforts to be the platform of why God should answer my prayer. It will never happen. It will never happen. I will never get to tell you how that I learned. It will never happen because there are many people watching me of all levels, babes, young men, and fathers, but I got my lesson. I learned it the hard way. 
that it is not how good I am that will buy me that which I need from my father. Actually, in that particular time, it will not happen. But the day I realize it is by the grace of God, by the favor of God, that I have succeeded even to maintain this righteousness. And this righteousness is not mine, it's of God. It's actually a gift that I've been given. And that's why the Bible calls it the gift of righteousness. So that nobody will ever lay claim, I am righteous because of my deeds. It's a gift. Because God clearly knows that nobody can qualify into righteousness. He just had to give it as a gift. Nobody is qualified. No one can qualify. And the more you try to qualify, the more nothing will ever manifest in your life. So that is another lesson that I learned, if I may say the hard way. And from that day is why now you can understand in my prayers, I can never, the most emotional moment of my Haggai, my meditation and my talks with God is when I remember how much I can do without him. When I remember how merciful and gracious he is to me, when I remember that I'm not deserving of this, I'm not. When I remember that this far I have come, it is Ebenezer. It is nothing short but Ebenezer himself. And that's why I, I will always say that I'm not a religious person. What you see is what you get. You will not find me in holy than thou positions and places where we are kept. I don't want to say like what, but you can actually tell how I, I, I am. Because... Um, if we are not that way, nothing will move or happen. If we are not holy uh, from everything and anything, nothing will happen. And that's why you find those kind of people, they are the most frustrated in the world. And when you try to look at their lives, nothing moves. Nothing actually moves. Then you will find somebody who goes before God. Father God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I try. I even call you in, the, in that scene and I tell you, Father, forgive me. And it is because of your mercy. It's because of your grace. It's because of your love for me that I can stand today. Have mercy on me. I wish we can have that kind of prayer. You start a prayer by, Father, have mercy on me. I'm so undeserving. Have mercy on me. Because I have come to realize that prayer gets answered very fast. The day you cease to exist, and he exists. And that is why you remember when John said that, uh, I will decrease that he may increase in me. Why can't you make that your prayer? May I decrease that, Abba Father, you may increase in me. But for me, I normally say, I cease to exist. You exist in me. Irregardless of where I am or I find myself in. You exist. I don't. No? So the other thing that maybe one last thing, I have so many things to teach, but there will be another lesson for life, part four. So let's just conclude with this one. And I feel like I didn't want to mention it, but it's important for me to mention it. Then we can pick it up maybe in lesson for life, part four, because I want you to start meditating about it, thinking on what did I just say? Because this is another profound spiritual secret, if I may say, to those who may want to call it secrets or something. For me, when it came into my realization, I learned that it is very important to actually know this. I wish I knew this many years back. I wish I had learned about this. So let me just throw that nugget to you and I leave you to think about it. So the third one is, what is your name? And I know maybe you will say, oh, if somebody was to ask me, what is your name? I'll say, my name is Catherine Wajiro Kenywa. Nope. That is your physical earthly name. What is your spiritual name? Remember, let me give you a scripture. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. By the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So you are born of God. And the seed that has given birth to you is the same seed that gave birth to the word. It's the word of God, Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ is, so are you. And remember the scripture that says, as he is, so am I here in this earth. So the same seed that has given birth to you 
is the same seed that is of God. It is God. You are born of God. You inhale from God. He has birthed you. And for me, I go a notch higher. Even the blood in my veins is the same blood. You remember Jesus shed blood. That blood is that blood I have. It's the same blood that flows in my vein because I am of him. I am born of him. I abide in him. I live in him. I thrive in him. Everything about me is in him. So I am beloved. Now I ye the sons of God. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Now I am a son of God. I am the child of the most high God. There's another deeper teaching on that, but I just want to stay there. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a child of God. Every child, when that child is born, the parents give a name to that child. What name did your Abba Father call you when he created you? So I need you to think about that. What is your spiritual name? Let me tell you something else that will challenge you. You'll ask me, how do I get to know my name? The same way you speak to the Father. Father, I want to know my name. Tell me what my name is. And that is a secret. You should never allow anybody to know or learn your spiritual name. Why? I'll give you a very good example. And this I learned in demonology, the study of demonology. For you to destroy a demon, when you call it by its name, you have finished it. I take you back to Genesis. For those who have not watched my teachings, previous teachings, please go back and learn the power in naming. The power that the man was given to name. What is in the name? The name brings out the nature, the look. If you want to identify the enemy, if I want to defeat the enemy, I need to know the name of that enemy. And how do I know the name of that enemy? By the what it brings forth, by its nature, by its character. What has, let me take for example a demon. I do not know this demon. But I can identify or I can actually begin to know what demon it is by virtue of the havoc it's making in my life. Call it luck. That's a demonic entity of luck. Yeah? You know. So there is a particular demon that has decided it is his mission to make sure I will never have. That's a demon of poverty. There is a demon that has made sure I will never get help of any rejection. You see, so the minute the enemy gets to know your spiritual name, you're called by that name. Okay, there's another level, higher, 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 another level for that topic. And that's why I didn't want to go deeper, but I wanted to brainstorm you now to tell you there's something as a father giving a child a name. You need to know what your spiritual name is. There is power in that name. Let me also say something that I strongly believe the fathers will identify with. And the others can follow slowly. That's why I'm throwing this nugget for you to be left thinking about. When you're called, when your father calls you by your name and you respond to that name, meaning that your spiritual senses are awake, you can hear the voice of God very clearly. That's how you understand his instruction, his guidelines. Whatever he wants, you can feel. Your, your, your senses, let me start with the five senses. Your spiritual five senses are very active. Your hearing, your smell, your taste, your seeing, your touch is very, very, very active. And now from that level, when your father calls you, you can answer. He calls you and you respond. Let me tell you something very profound. We are in the Kairos moment. This is set time for God to do great things. In this set time, when Abba Father calls you and you answer, what answering means when he calls you by your name and you answer it means that the minute i answered catherine yes father everything that he predestined for me from the foundations of the earth 
will manifest. I think that is the shortest form of manifestation that can ever be from the realm of the spirit. On your set time, you're called and you answer. So answering means, in this case, your father calls you by your spiritual name and you answer. Answering means the manifestation of who you are predestined to be. The will, purpose, and mission manifesting at once in your life. This is the set time for that to happen. So I had not planned to add number three in the life's lesson, but I felt it so deeply in my spirit that I needed to bring that out. Maybe there are people who are already ready for that, who needed to hear that, to conform to it, to, to start now thinking through it, and to also now live to know who they are. Because as I always say, Sinachi one sang, I know who I am. That song is very deep. That song is so profound. It's like, this is one of the songs I say, limitless songs. Because the minute you say you know who you are, day by day you are discovering who you are. And you are born of God. So every single second is a learning lesson. So I hope by that, I will leave you with that actually. And I hope that you have learned something new today. I hope that you will put to practice. Remember, I'm closing by now faith is substance of things hoped for. Substance of things hoped for. Now faith is substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And until next time, it's goodbye for now. Kindly watch my videos. Kindly, guys, support me by watching 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 my videos like kindly comment kindly give your suggestions yeah and uh, share and for the new who have just come on board kindly kindly subscribe that's the only support that i would really 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 need from you and appreciate for you so that i can keep being on air yes it's true that maybe i've not i have not even started receiving anything but all in all that which i am doing is very profound is changing lives and that is why i feel that i need to emphasize watch 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 it's life changing i know that in our time people like to watch different kind of things but create time to learn something. Tell yourself that every single day I want to learn something. And this is one of the platforms where I feel strongly that you will learn something. Every time you tune in, you will learn something new. Something that will change your life. Something that will enlighten you. Something that will make you solve a problem. Remember that the genesis of this channel was to save marriages. Restore marriages. Marriages that were not of God, how do you know, how will you know that it was not of God if it is not through the knowledge and the revelation of the word of God? So that's the only way you can learn, 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 learn. And remember my key scripture, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So until next time, so keep watching and until next time, God bless.